Hey there beautiful people, in this video tutorial what we're going to look at is making a game ready tree. So we're going to go about making the tree that you can see on screen and it's going to be game ready so we're going to make sure that it's low poly enough to go into a game engine. So we're going to look at the modeling process, we're going to take a really good look at the texturing process, we're going to make sure that everything's properly UV mapped and by the time we're done we'll hopefully have something that looks really cool. If you are one of my fabulous patron supporters, then the textures that I make in this video I will make available to you, so that if you just want to put the tree together yourself quickly, you can do that. If, however, you aren't one of my patron followers, you absolutely can be. Uh, the link will be on screen or in the video description. And, um, you know, check it out. But if not, you can get the textures from texture.com unedited and you'll just have to do a bit of work so we're going to go through um, that first step now so for me I always start my uh, trees with the branches and so you can see here in this folder I've already been out to the tinternet and I've got myself some beautiful um, pine branches and I've got pine bark texture so what we're going to do first is get these four pine branches onto one texture map. So we'll go into Photoshop for that. We're going to go File, New, and we're going to call this uh, Branches Diffuse. Oh no, I had Caps Lock on. <sighs> what a mug. Branches underscore Diffuse. <laughs> that's better. Okay, now the size. We'll do this as a 2K texture. That's 2048 by 2048, <laughs> wicked, uh, and everything's good, so we'll click OK on that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, just because I like knowing that I'm getting my full screen real estate, is press Control and Zero just to make sure that that's full, full size. And now I'm going to go to File, Open, and we're going to open those other four images. So let's get those all open, they'll all open across the top, and I'm just going to copy them over one at a time onto the kind of master image. So we'll start with this one. So I'm going to press Control A and Control C. So I selected all and then I copied it. And then we're going to go. How do I get back across there? Where's my main? What, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, there it is. Branches diffuse. Right. So we'll paste this one onto here. Lovely. And we're just going to position it somewhere off the side. I want to try and make as good use of the texture space as I can, so I'm going to resize that a little bit. Okay, so that's the first one on there. Okay, now we need another one. So we'll get this one. Control A, Control C, back to my main diffuse, and then I'm going to do Control V to paste. That'll put it on a new layer for me, which is handy so that I can uh, resize things and move things around independently at this stage. Okay, so this one kind of looks like um, it wants to go up in the top corner, I think. Okay, let's resize that. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting the most out of this space that I've got. Okay, so I'm done with that one. What have we got in here? I haven't got this one yet. So Control A, Control C, back into my main image, paste that in. Where's this one going to go? Where's this cheeky little one going to go? Up here, I reckon. Control T to resize, and we'll get it fairly close, something like that. Okay, so I'm now done with that one. And this is my final one, Control A, Control C. Uh, get this one into here, Control V to paste. And this one, I think what I'm going to do is rotate this one around. So I press Control and T again to turn on the um, free transform tool. And I'll put that one there. So I can see straight away that I'm not really getting the uh, best use of space out of this. So I'm going to do a little bit of moving around. Oh. Uh, so let's just move that one down to the bottom. Okay, so I think we can do a little bit better with this one. So what happens if I rotate this around? Mm, maybe. Okay, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to have this one. I'm going to rotate this one around as well. 
don't know if I needed to rotate them around, but it feels good to do it, so this one can be a little bit smaller because it's going to be a smaller branch, and this one, nope, and this one, we're going to flip around this way, and we'll move it over here, like that. It's not bad. I can still do a little bit better somewhere, I know I can. Okay, so we're going to move this one up here. Sort of into the middle. And I know that that now means that I can get a little bit more out of this one. That's better. Yeah, that's not bad. So I'm fairly happy with that. I probably could pack this a little bit tighter. But it's a 2K texture and I'll get away with it. And I don't want to spend all day doing this because it's not a very interesting part of the video, is it? So, we've got all those um, images ready to go, so that can now be imported as one texture map when we get to the Maya part. Uh, but there's still a little bit of setting up that we need to do to make this work as a tree branch texture. So what I'm going to do first of all is just flatten uh, this image. So, I've selected all layers at once, I'm going to right click and do Merge Layers. So they're now all beautifully merged together. And then what I'm going to do is create a new layer. So this one is going to be my alpha. And if you've never used alpha layers before, what they essentially are are black and white images that tell um, a 3D application such as Maya or Unreal Engine which parts of an image you can see and which parts of an image you want to be see-through. So for something like a tree branch, it's really useful. But we need to set that up first. So, on my layer 4, which is the one with all my branches on, I'm going to... what do I want to do? Uh, instead of the magic wand tool, I'm going to use quick selection. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to select everything, as you can see, but hopefully when I let go, it's just pinged to the branches because there's nothing else on those layers. So, that's really good. And then I'm going to go to my alpha layer, so you can see I've still got that selection, my marquee, uh, is it called a marquee? The wiggly line is still there. Right, so the bit that I want to be seen needs to be white. You can see that my two colours here that I have are black and white, so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to fill um, this with the colour I want. So it's Alt and Delete to fill that part of the image with white. And everything that I don't want to be shown through, I want to be black. So to do that, I'm going to go to Select and Inverse. So now everything apart from the space with the branches in is selected. And I press Control and Delete, and that will fill with the background colour. And you can see now I've got quite a handsome looking alpha channel. If I press Control and D to deselect, this is the uh, very pretty image that it leaves me with. Which is spot on, that's exactly what I wanted it to look like. So, this is no good here though, it's just in the way, and it won't actually function as an alpha channel. To make it be an alpha channel, we need to go to channels, which is just next to layers. And you can see we've got RGB, which is um, showing all three of your color channels at once. And um, we need an alpha channel, but it's not there. So here, if you're on layers, this would be create new layer, but in channels, it creates a new channel. And because there isn't an alpha channel, that's what it will create, a new alpha channel. So we're going to go to alpha layer. We're going to press Control A and Control C to select everything on that layer. Back into Channels, make sure you're on your alpha layer, and then Control and V to paste. That now has given us an alpha channel. That is going to be so amazing uh, later when we need to use it. Okay, so that bit's done. So you can see because we've been working on the alpha channel, that's the bit that's visible. Uh, but we don't want that to be visible. We want the RGB to be visible again. So I'm going to turn that on. Whenever you're previewing your alpha, um, the bits that are going to be see-through show up red, just in case you're wondering why that was red. So I'm just going to kill that, because I don't need to be able to see it now. So that's the alpha setup. That's ace. So the last thing I really need to do, I can bin this alpha layer now. It's done its job. I want to make sure that I have um, a colour around the edge, because I want to make sure that if the alpha channel, uh, if there's a bit of bleeding going on around the edge, that it's still showing the right colour. So, we need to set that up now. So I'm going to create a new layer, and this is going to go behind the layer with the branches on. And we need to get some colour on here. So, 
I'm just going to lay down a um, kind of green color. So I'm just going to sample kind of a middle of the road green, I think, that appears in most of the branches. And I'm going to press Ctrl and D just to turn that selection off and Alt and Delete to fill. Uh, and that's that's fine. That's good enough. What I will also do though, because I just want to make sure that the colours match as much as possible, is I'm going to duplicate this layer a couple of times. Like that, just by dragging it onto the new layer um, icon. And then I'm going to put a bit of a blur on these and that will just spill these colours out a little bit over the edge, around the edge. So it should be the matching colour that we get, which is what we want. So I'm going to go to Filter, uh, down to Blur, and I'll be using Gaussian Blur because it's my favourite type of blur. If you haven't got a favourite type of blur, you should get one. Okay, and we just want to make sure that we're not blurring it too much. And hopefully you can see in the background that it's just causing these um, edges to be a little bit, if I just flick that on and off, you see it's just blending a little bit better with the background, which is the effect I'm going for. So I'll do it on that layer, and I'm just going to repeat it on this layer, just to make the effect a little bit stronger. So we're going to do that blur again, Gaussian blur. Okay, let's see what effect this is having. So you can see it is adding, when I flip it on and off, it's adding to the blurred effect that we're getting, which is what we want. I might blur this one out a little bit further. Maybe not, maybe I don't like that. Yeah, that looks okay. So I click on OK on that. And I think that will do for me. I'm happy with that. So we're now going to save this out as a texture. And then we'll move into Maya to start building the tree. So let's get this saved out. We need to save this out properly. Otherwise, it will be no use to us. So file, save as. So the first thing I'm going to do is save like a master version of the texture. So if there's anything wrong with it, I can come back into Photoshop, the one that's got all the layers, and I can make adjustments. So I'm going to call this one Branches Master. And that's going to stay as a Photoshop file. So I'll click on Save. And that's that one done. And then I want a compressed version, which is flattened, so only has one layer, but also has an alpha channel. So we can use that one in Maya. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. This one's going to be a Targa. Uh, Targa is my favorite image format. Again, you should have a favorite image format. We're going to call this one Branches Diffuse. OK, now, this is important. When you're working with a Targa file and you need the alpha channel to come through, make sure alpha channels is selected. So save that. What you also need to do is this target options box will come up and you've got a choice how many bits per pixel do you want and um, if you want the alpha channel you need to choose 32 24 bits um, is RGB it's 8 times 3 so 8 bits per colour and then 32 is another 8 bits which is another colour which is your alpha channel so we need to have that one selected as well and we'll click on OK so that is the branches set up what we need to do now is get into Maya and start building the branches in 3D. Yes. Okay, so here we are in Maya. The first thing we're going to do is put down a, a copy of those branches we've just made so we can trace them with new shapes. So the way we'll do that is with a, a polygon plane. Here it is. And I'm just going to scale this up. Now, the scale that we're working at at the moment doesn't really matter, but by default, the units that you work with in Maya are centimeters. So if something is 10, it's 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna be making a tree that's about seven meters high. So I'm gonna be choosing 700 for the height when we get there. So it won't matter yet because we can scale these leaves up, but that's the kind of scale we'll be working with, so we need to know that. Right, so here is our, um, new plane. So I'm going to go to my channel box and I'm just going to give this a name. I'm just going to call it reference. And not that it really matters, but I don't want any subdivisions on it. So I'm just going to change both of those to one under inputs. 
Uh, and I'm happy with that. Right, we need to get that image on there. So let's right click, assign new material, uh, we'll put our Lambert on it. There it is, Lambert 2. And then for the colour, I'm going to choose a file and pine tree textures. We're going to use branches diffuse. And you can see, because we put the alpha channel on, um, the branches are nice and see through. So they're going to look ace when we use them later. Okay, so let's click on open. Right, what you need to remember is that if your textures don't show up, it's because you haven't turned um, texturing on. So the way you do that is with this little um, icon here, and that will show them. Or if you're a keyboard shortcut user, as I am, you can just press six on your keyboard, and that will make them show up. So this is our reference for the branches that we're going to create. Now that that's set up, we can get on to making four different branches. Okay, so we're going to go for the first branch. I think I'm going to go for this bottom corner here. So what I'm going to do is create a new polygon plane. Again, this is going to need to be sized up. Let's move this just to be in roughly the right place. Okay, into my channel box, I'm going to name this branch one. And I'm going to get rid of the subdivisions again because I want to put these in manually to make sure that I've got as few as possible. With this being a game ready tree, we need to make sure that we're not throwing any polygons away. So that's what we need to do. Right, so what I'm going to do to make this easier on myself is go into the top view. Just zoom out a little bit, press 6 so I can see my materials. I'm going to turn the grid off as well because it's in my way. And I'm going to put in some subdivisions manually. Yeah, what I'm going to do before this becomes a pain is I'm going to put this onto a layer. So I've selected my background, um, layers, create layer from selected. I'm going to call this reference. So this is my reference layer. In fact, I'm going to call it L underscore reference. Because if you've already got something called reference in your scene, it won't let you call the layer reference. Anyways, we'll click on save and we're going to change that V to our, not that V, this P, no, that's the, the, the third one, oh, if only I knew what I was doing, so we're going to change that to an R, which means we can see it, but we can't select it, so that'll stop it becoming uh, being a pain, right, let's get this sorted then, so I'm going to go into vertex mode, I'm going to move these vertices up to the top, I'm going to move these vertices down to the bottom, and I need to now make some decisions on where I need to put extra edges to trace the outline of this branch without using more than I need to. So we're going to use the mesh tools. In fact, let's use it from here. So this is the um, multi-cut tool. And the way to get an edge loop, so you can see it will just let you kind of cut through a shape, which is nice. But if you hold control then it wants to put nice straight edge loops in, which is what we want. So the first thing we're going to do is put an edge loop straight down the middle, or as straight down the middle as we can get it, because we want to be able to do that with the, the branches to make them look like the draping. So each one of these branches will have a line down the middle. That's really important. And now I need to look at where I have to put in additional edge loops. So I'm just going to try and put one about here, where I think is about the kind of the furthest that the branch kicks out. And I'm going to try and get away with just using this many vertices to trace it. If I need to put some more in in a minute, that's what I'll do. Uh, but we'll do a little bit of um, vertex movement now to try and get the shape of this tree. So we're going to put that one there at the base. This one needs to kind of kick out here. And this one about there. So I'm just trying to be careful not to cut any of the the branches off. That one's going to go about there. That's the furthest it kicks out. And I'm going to bring this one in as much as I can get away with, which is quite a lot. Uh, about there, I think. So you can see I've got as close as I can without cutting anything off or using too many vertices. Okay, this one here, we can see the point that this kicks out furthest is just here, so I'll drop that one there. We'll use this one here, I 
I think we've already done this one. Yeah, that's as good as that one's getting, I think. And we'll just bring this one in as well to create a bit of a point. Okay, so we need to get these edges as close as we can because these are going to be the transparent areas. And the way that game engines work is that the more of these transparent layers you have on top of each other, the higher the shader complexity of a given level gets. And so if you have too many of these kind of that you're looking through, it slows it down. So we don't want to have too much overlapping, um, too much overlapping transparent space. So that's why we're tracing this out, because you, you could argue that we could have done this with one face or two if we just wanted to make it go like that, where we've used four. Uh, but this, this is the better way to do it. So um, there is our first branch, and I'm happy with that. Okay, let's do another one. We'll do this one here. What I'm going to do for this one, actually, is I'm going to duplicate this one, because... It's actually not a bad starting point. And we'll just scale it down a little bit. Modify center pivot. There we go. Right, so let's do this one next. Right, put it into vertex mode. Why is this one called branch one? Which one did I just move? Branch two. Whatevs. Okay, so vertex mode. Let's try and get this shape so that we're happy with it. So that one's going to go about there. I want this one pretty much at the base. That one's going to go ooh, just about there. And this one I think can come in a bit further. We oh, sure can. This one obviously needs to come down. And this one is going to go to about there. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So, there you can see we've now got two branches done. Right, at this stage, I'm not going to bore you with repeating the process another two times. I'll leave you to do that yourself, and uh, we'll skip through me doing it. I, I might. I might do the, uh, the fast-forwarding thing. I do like a bit of editing. Anyway, so we'll reconvene when we've got all these branches done, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, welcome back. So, you should be able to see from my screen that I've got the um, outline of the four branches that I want to use. And what we need to do now is texture each of these and make sure that the UV maps are done properly. So, we'll start with this bad boy over here. And we're going to just assign an existing material, Lambert 2. What I'm going to do, though, I'm just going to go into the... Uh, Hypershade, I'm going to rename this. Let's go M underscore branches. One thing I will tell you as I'm doing this, you should rename yours. Whenever you type something in this box, if you don't press enter when you're done, it crashes. In Maya 2016, hopefully in 2017 they fixed that. God, I hope so. Um, but just be aware because it's soul destroying when uh, Maya loses all your work for you. Okay, so I've done that right so let me just get rid of that background image and you can see that the entire image has been applied to it which is not what we want but we're going to sort each one of these out in a sec so let's just um, assign existing material branches nope select it first assign existing material branches assign existing material branches assign existing material Branches. Right, so they're all ready to go. So we'll start with this one in the bottom corner and we'll look at UV in these. So we're going to go to UV, UV editor. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so you can see it starts as a plane, which is what we started with. So it makes sense that that's what it would look like. But that doesn't resemble the shape we've created here. So we could do with remapping this so that it creates the shape that we've got there. Okay, so to do this, we're going to do a planar projection. So we'll click on this, and we're going to do it on the y-axis, because that's the one that's looking 
down, which is the, the right direction for us. So we'll click on project, and it gives us this shape here, which should be the shape of the leaf. Uh, and you can see that it is that bit just going down there is this bit here. So we've got to get that so that it is lined up now with that image. So let's first of all try and get it the right dimensions or as close to the right dimensions as we can. And we're just going to have to do a little bit of moving these points around again because it's sort of rotated itself. So we're going to put this into UV mode and I'm just going to pretty much repeat the process that I just went through. And you'll see that it's coming together in the viewport over here to resemble the way it should. It's just about putting these points in pretty much the same place as they were when we traced it. So that one goes about here is where I put it. Let's get it nice and close though. Like that. Uh, this one needs to go up here. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty nice. So that's the first branch done. So let's do another one together and then I'll leave you to do the other two. So we're going to do this middle one in here. So let's put it into object mode. I'm going to do a planar projection. There we go. And straight away again, we can see that this is not quite the right size and shape. So let's do our best to scale this down. Like that. Okay, we'll just zoom in on this so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go for scaling up in that direction. Okay, try and put the points as close to the right place as I can. And I might just get away with scaling this one actually. I shouldn't have to move any individual UVs like I did for the other one. Yeah, that one looks okay. So let's just put that into object mode. Make sure that we're happy with it. Yeah, so I've now got two branches complete. Okay, so as we did when we were tracing these, I'll leave you to do the UV uh, mapping of the other two. And then once those are done, we'll look at the next step, which is about shaping those branches so that they look nice and believable. You can see I've now got four individual branches that I can mess around with, which is lovely. That's what I wanted. So we can close the UV editor for now. And what we're going to want to do next is reshape these so that they look a little bit more branchy. So let's have a look at how we can do that in the perspective view with this one, for instance. So let's put it into vertex mode. And we just want to reshape this a little bit. So I'm going to start with getting the vertices on the sides. Uh, I'm going to move those down. Whoa, not like that. Crazy. And that's going to give it that kind of that look that we were talking about earlier. So that's pretty nice already. I'm happy with that. And then what we're going to do is, um, still in vertex mode, we're going to get these ones at the end and we're going to move those down and probably move it back in a little bit as well. Like that, just so we're kind of getting a rotation sort of vibe to it. I'll bring that one down. Um, bring that one down a little bit more and bring it in this way. And that will allow me to just bring that one down. So it creates a bit of a, a drooping effect. I'll do the same with this one. So let's get it into vertex mode. Okay, let's just select the vertices around the side. Let's get it nice and droopy. 
Let's get these, so I'll move that down, move it in a little bit, move it in like that, and then these three on the end, yeah, move that down, and in, and maybe this one I'll move down a little bit as well, so it's nice and droopy. Oh yeah, that's beautiful and branchy. Okay, we'll do this one, so into vertex mode. Uh, let's get all the verts that we want. So I want those three, and I want those three. Let's pull that down. Lovely. I missed one. It's annoying. Or did I? No, I wanted that. So I pull those down. Yep. That's nice enough. And then we're going to set about shaping this. Same way that we've done with the other ones. So let's move that down and back a bit. And then we'll get these on the end and move that down and back in. And then this one here. Let's get that nice and droopy. Ah. Object mode. Oh, I can't hit object mode. There we go. So that's that branch. And then the final one. Get it into vertex mode. Get all those verts that we want to move down. Yep, 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 yep. I'm liking that. Now what I might do on this one is scale that in a little bit as well, just to make that a bit more drastic. And just give me a little bit more variation in the tree. Okay, let's select all these. Move that down. Select all these. Move that down. Select the one on the end. Move him down. Okay. So you can see I've now got my four branches. Right, at this stage, just to make it a little bit easier for me to work with, I'm just going to line these up. So I want one there. And maybe do this by size as well. So I'll rotate this one around like that. Put that one there. And then we'll have this one over here. And finally this one here. Champion. Okay, so here are our four handsome looking branches. Right, what we're going to do next is set these up so that they work two sided. The uh, issue that you can have with branches is that you can import them into a game engine and you can tell the game engine that they're two sided. So usually uh, polygons are one sided. And that means that they will render from one side, and the other side they'll be see-through. And you can tell something like Unreal Engine that they're two-sided, and it will render the other side, and it'll be identical to the side that is rendered. But the problem is the normals, so the direction the faces are facing affects us how light reacts with them. And if you make them two-sided, the normals are still facing the original direction, so they don't light properly. So the best way... To remedy that, and we'll just try and do this with them all at once, is we're going to duplicate them, like that, and then, let's just get in nice and close on one of them, we're going to move it down ever so slightly. So let's do 0 0.05, minus 0 0.05, sorry. And that will just move these copies down. Now you can see, this is the, the shading problem. Maya's shown them as two-sided, but it's given as a shading problem. There's no colour on this side. And we like them to be seen from both below and above. So in order to get that, we're going to go to uh, Mesh Display, and we're going to click on Reverse. And that reverses the normal direction. So now, we've got branches that can be seen by uh, from both directions because we've got two copies of them. Now that does um, double the amount of faces that we've used for these branches but if you want them to look any good you've not really got a choice on that one. So that needed to happen. Right, there are our branches. What we're going to do next is combine each of them. So we're going to do mesh, combine uh, and we'll do Center pivot just to make it easier in a minute. Mesh combine, 
modify center pivot, mesh combine, modify center pivot, and mesh combine, and modify center pivot. Okay, so they're all ready to go, but what we need is a way to attach them to the trunk of the tree. Now we could just do it with like attaching here, but that it just won't look right. So we're going to create a little bit of a shape that will connect this to the tree uh, to be a bit more of branch. And then we're going to move on to the trunk. So we're just going to do this for one of the branches and then we'll move on to making the trunk and doing some texturing and then we'll do some duplicating around to save some work and it will all be good. Okay, so what we need to do is create a cylinder. So let's have a new cylinder. And we need to do some work on this cylinder because we don't want to be throwing this many faces away. That's far too many. We want this to be a really, really simple shape. Because again, we're going to be duplicating this around the tree and we don't want to throw any faces away unnecessarily because it's really wasteful. So, subdivision axis, we're going to change that straight away. That's going to become three. And that will look very triangular. But we're going to use a shading trick so that when this is much smaller in the tree, it will, we'll assume that it's cylindrical, which is good. Right. Let's also rotate this around. So we're going to move it just for now 90 degrees. We'll elongate it a little bit. Uh, and that's a good start. Right, let's just call this one branch. No, we can't call this one branch, can we? Because they're already called branch. What should we call this one? It kind of is a branch, but we need it. We'll call it stump. Stump's a good name. Right, I want to get stump lined up. So let's plop him over here. Uh, yep, and then in the side view, let's just press four so I can see what I'm doing. No, six, sorry. In the side view, we want to just make sure that that is in the right sort of place and facing, importantly, the right kind of angle. There we go. Right, so now it should just be a case of getting this shaped and um, to the right size. So we're going to get these oh, vertex mode. Oh, I'm a terrible aim with this today. Vertex. Okay, let's get those three verts there, and we're going to bring them together to form a bit of a point. And then we're going to move these so that they are kind of nicely attaching to this branch. And we're going to try, I think, and match the thickness. Mostly. No, let's go a bit smaller, actually. And we'll just overlap. Okay. <clears throat> and then these vertices over here, we're just going to move over to the side a bit so that it's in a straight line. Oh, didn't get them all. Ah! What am I doing? Okay, move those over a little bit, like that. Let's scale them in, and that is not enough. About that, and let's just make that a bit shorter. Okay, I think that'll do. So, that's gonna be our branch. We're not throwing many faces away on that, that looks okay. And what we're just gonna do about this hard edge because it's very hard, is we're going to click on Mesh Display and we're going to do Soften Edge. And it should now look a lot softer. It still does look a little bit sharp, but believe me, you won't see that when, when we put it in the tree, because there'll be a lot going up. Right, so that's the branch made, the stump, stumpy branch. What we need to do now is make the trunk of the tree and then it's all about texturing the tree and the stump and assembling it all together. So we're getting there, the, the finishing line is in sight. Which is good because it's like 
quarter past ten at night. I'm usually in bed by now. What am I doing? Right. Let's move all these branches out of the way. Let's build us a tree. So, um, we'll have a new cylinder. I'm going to call this one trunk. And subdivision axis. We're going to start with six. Um, and the height of this bad boy is going to be 700. So it's a nice tall tree. You can see at the moment that's far too skinny. Um, and we're going to do. We're going to move this up on Y by 350. That's rotate. We're going to move this up on Y by about 350. There we go. Right. And then we need to put a little bit of thickness in this bad boy. Let me see. Um, a little bit more than that. So I'm just upping the radius. I think I need to go for about. Let me see. Yeah, I like that. That's a good starting point. So my radius I've started with is um, 7.4. So about 7.5. Okay, so that's all right. And then what we need to do is get that thinned out at the top because uh, these trees, as you've seen at the beginning of the video, at the beginning of the tutorial, um, they get thinner at the top. So let's select all the verts at the top and we're just going to scale these in. Whoa, I've missed one. Try again, mister. Try again. There we go. Scale them in to form a point. That's pretty pointy. Object mode. Yeah, that's alright. And then we need to do a little bit of work on the bottom just to make this look like it is a tree. So I'll go back to the multi cut tool and we're going to hold control. Okay, so at the bottom of this tree, we're going to need a few edge loops. So I'm going to put, and I, I want to be as careful as I can about not using too many, but I do need this tree to flare out a little bit at the bottom. So I think I'm going to give myself three edge loops to do that. Okay, I'm going to go into edge mode now and we will select this, in fact, let's do all the edges at once. Oh, no, that's not right. That one, that one, and that one. And I'm just going to scale that in quite drastically at first. Um, And then let's scale that in not quite as much. And then just this row at the top. Oh, what am I doing? Just this one like that. And I think this one I'm going to bring down a little bit. And this one. Yeah. Okay, so you can see now I've got this sort of flaring effect going on at the bottom. I'm also going to go into vertex mode and I'm just going to adjust some of these vertices to make it look like it's got roots going on really. So let's just move some of these around just to make the bottom of the tree a little bit more interesting. Let's move that one out there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at what the the tree's looking like overall. Um, yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so I think to keep it simple, that will be um, a good enough trunk. I'm happy with that. So now what we need to do is some texturing and some UV mapping. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to work quite hard to get the UV set up on this trunk nice and even. So we're going to assign a new material, uh, we'll do it as a Lambert, and the colour, instead of using the actual bark texture, we're not going to go that far yet, we're going to use this checker pattern. So let's uh, see what that's doing. You can see that is 
not good. What we're really looking for is nice small squares on this. So we need to set this up to give us that. So we're going to select, uh, we're going to select the trunk now, and then we're going to go to our UV editor to see what we're working with. And actually, that's not bad, but I think we can do a little bit better. So let's do a UV map. So I'm going to start with a automatic map. And that will better represent the shape of the tree that we've created. So there it is, you can see. I'm going to put this into edge mode. And we need to get this to be one continuous unwrap, really. And you can see it's been split into parts. So we're just going to have one seam going down the, the tree. And we're going to set that up. So we're looking for edges that need connecting. So that edge there clearly needs connecting. So we're going to go polygons, move and sew edges. And that will put those two together. And I can see there's another two edges there. So move and sew those. And there's one more to do. Polygons, move and sew. And that is basically the, the tree. You can see down the bottom we've got the shape because it differed. And that might have a bit of an effect on the tree that we've created, uh, on the UVs. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. That there represents the bottom of the tree, which we actually don't need to worry about. And I'm not sure where the top has been put. I assume it's up here somewhere. Or well, maybe the top and bottom are overlapping. That's not really an issue anyway. It's just the, um, the sides that we need to worry about. So I'm now going to just put this into shell mode. I'm going to get this tool here, which is the optimize UV tool. And what this does is, let's get a nice big brush, is it resizes the UVs so that you get nice even squares, usually. It's not always perfect, but it does give quite a good effect. So I'm just painting this like that. Okay, so now what we'll do is we're going to just press W to get rid of that tool. I'm going to put it into shell mode. And I want nice, like I said earlier, I want nice small squares on this. So I'm going to scale this up until I'm getting some squares. Okay, that is actually nice. So you can see, oh, where am I? You can see that I'm getting squares. And squares are what I wanted to see. I didn't want to see rectangles. So let's check down the bottom. See if there are any rectangles going on there. It's a long way down this tree. It's like the tallest tree ever. I'm not convinced it's going to be thick enough. I might need to change that later. Okay, so down at the bottom. I think that's where the seam is. Hopefully it's nice and continuous everywhere else. So it's a little bit seamy at the bottom, which is not ideal. So let's just go back down here and see if there's anything we can do about that. It might be that some edges need sewing together. And I think that is the case. So let's put this into edge mode. And we'll look for any... Yeah. So this set of edges here need sewing together. So we'll do move and sew. And the same for these. So, move and sew those, and here. So, we just need to make sure that they are, what's going on here? Just need to make sure that they're all nicely sewn together, so move and sew. And then I'm going to bring in my Optimize UV brush again. I'll just get a bigger brush, and I just want to make sure that that is nice and optimized. Okay, that's not amazing. So I've still got this seam here, which is not great. But overall, I think we'll get away with that. So that's the tree UV mapped. So you can see that the, um, the squares do get bigger as you move further up the tree. But thankfully, 
uh, because of the fact that the tree is going to be high you won't really see that so that's nice enough I think for the trunk of the tree all that we need to do now is find those leaves and we're just going to UV map this so this is what the uh, the mapping looks like at the moment let's just assign that checker texture to it so assign existing material it'll be Lambert 3 that actually isn't bad I'm going to put it into shell mode uh, let's just scale this up so there is going to be some distortion because of the way that we pulled those together um, but no I think that's pretty nice so you can see that's now we've got nice squares on there they're ready for the material so let's make that material and assign it and then we'll be uh, ready to put the branches on the tree so we're going to assign a new material to this a new Lambert I'm going to call this Lambert uh, Bark and for the colour I'm going to choose a file and it's going to be, what do we call it? It's that one there isn't it? The Seamless Pine Bark and there we go, that's now gone on there and that looks okay, I'm happy enough with that okay, we'll apply that one to this, assign the existing material bark make sure that I'm happy with it let me just get these vertices frame those up um, yeah I think up close that looks okay so now we need to get some branches on this tree so we just need to finish putting these branches together so let's find this we need to duplicate this so that each one of these branches has got one so let's duplicate that and hopefully if we go to the top view these should all be in roughly the same place so it shouldn't be difficult to attach one of these branches like that so I'm happy enough with all of those now obviously if I was being really careful about this I'd make sure that um, the colour of the bark matched but again this is actually quite a forgiving tree to make so uh, I think I'll get away with that right now let's make each one of these branches ready to attach so we're going to go to so I've selected the stump and the the main branch we're going to go mesh combine and then I'm going to go to modify center pivot but I actually don't want to center the pivot. What I want to do, so I'm going to press um, D, which puts you into pivot move mode, and I'm going to press V because that snaps to vertex. I'm just going to snap that to that vertex. I'm just going to move into uh, my perspective view because, as you can see, I press D and V again. That wasn't quite in the right place. So now I've got my pivot point, so that'll make it a lot easier when I'm attaching those branches. I need to repeat this for the other four branches. So it's going to be mesh combine, I'll do modify, center pivot just to get that a bit closer. D and V, let's bring that over here and over here. Um, D and V, let's move it up. Yep, that's pretty close. Let's get this one mesh combine, modify, center pivot. And then we're going to move that pivot to the right place or as close as we can get it that'll do and one final one to do mesh combine modify center pivot and then it's going to be DMV let's pull that over here Oh, oh, yeah, that's at the right place. Pull it up. I need to change angle. I'm nowhere near. Nowhere near. What are you doing? Yeah, and that'll do. Okay, so we've now got one, two, three, four branches. Okay, each one of these branches has got a lot of history going on. So I'm going to select them all. 
modify, no, edit, delete by type, history. And so they've not got really good names, so let's rename these again. So I'll have branch one, branch two, branch three, branch four. And what we need to do now is arrange these branches on the tree. So we'll do that in the next step. Okay, so at the bottom of this tree, we're going to have some really kind of piddly branches. So let's go Control and D. So I'm going to leave my four original branches here so I can always find them. And we're going to just move away up the tree. Yeah, about there, I think. These branches don't start right at the bottom. And then we just need to get this first one in place. So we'll move that to about there. Yeah, that's okay. Make sure I'm happy with the angle of it. So I think down the bottom I'm going to have them just pointing down a little bit more. Right, so at the bottom they are going to be quite small, so I'm going to allow that one to stay that kind of size. I'm going to duplicate this, swing it around, swing it around a bit further than that, I think, and then move this into place. So what I found, I was actually surrounded by pine trees the other day, is they actually kind of grow in levels. So you get one, so if this is your, <laughs> this is your trunk, you get them growing around a level, and then they leave it for a bit, and then they grow around another level. So they, they grow in stages, which is nice. It makes it a bit easier for putting together um, trees for what we're doing. Okay, so now I'm going to get this one. And... I've duplicated it, I'm just going to put it in the tree. Okay, so we need this to be in sort of the right place again. So I'm probably going to go for around about five or six per level, I think. So yeah, I like that one. And I just need to move that out of the tree a little bit so we can see the branch. That's okay. Um, I think I'll have another one of these on this level. We can go over there. And let's just move that one to the right place. Definitely need one coming out of here, I think. So let's look for that. I think we'll have this one. So let's try and move this into place. Like so. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what's the height looking like? Yeah, pretty close. I'm just going to rotate this one down a little bit. Okay, so that's my first sort of level of branches. Um, it doesn't quite look even though. Let's just rotate that down a little bit more. Rotate this one down a bit more as well. Yep, I'm happy enough with that. So you can see I am leaving a little bit bare here, but these trees are very random, so I want to try and capture that. Right, I haven't used this branch yet, so let's have that one on the next level. So I'm going to leave, I think they sort of have about that much of a gap between each level. So let's give that one a go. And they're going to get a little bit bigger on this level as well. So let's just make sure that I'm happy with the position of this one. Yep. And then what I'm going to do is duplicate some of these up. And move them around. Right, that at a funny angle so let's do modify freeze transformations and that will allow me to just rotate it okay I really want to deal with that bare area there on this level so let's move that up and then we'll move that out yep 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 so it's kind of now all a case of arranging branches which 
it gets tedious, I'm not going to lie. It is a very tedious thing to do. But when you've got a sexy looking tree at the end, it's worth it. I would argue it's worth it anyway. Let's do modify freeze transformations just so that I'm going to get a good rotation on this. Yep, that one looks okay. Let's have a bit of a rotation on it just to mix it up a bit. And we'll have this one. Move that one up. I'm just going to move this one around a touch. How many have we got there? Four. Let's have one more. We'll have a small one. smallish there we go that'll be okay so you can see that's now coming together I'm not quite happy with how dense that's going to be I'm going to move that down a little bit it's better so I've now got two rows of those branches I'm going to do a third row again I'm going to try and be a bit random about this but then I'm just going to start duplicating branches willy-nilly and see what I end up with because I'm impatient like that Okay, so we'll have this one next. Let's try and get a fairly consistent sort of... Yep, that's good. Okay, let's have that one rotated right around the other side. And we'll just stick it out there. Yep, let's get a bit of rotation going on. I like it, I like it. We'll have this one, duplicate that, move it up. Let's get some rotation going on on this one. I think I need to get a bit closer on that. I think it's sticking out of the tree. Yeah. There we go. So that's looking nice. Let's just move that up a little bit more. Okay, I want this branch next. Let's duplicate that up to there. Let's rotate it around a bit. And then we'll move that in so it's not sticking out of the tree again. Yep. And uh, we definitely need at least one more branch on this one. I'm going to duplicate this one around. And I'm actually going to have two quite similar next to each other. Keep it nice and random. I'll have that one quite a bit smaller. For now, anyway. And let's have this one up here as well. Okay. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to try and be a bit lazy about this. Let's duplicate all of those. Move up. And then let's see if we can get away with rotating those all around a bit. Okay, now let's get all of these. Let's duplicate them up. Like that. Let's now add a bit more rotation to this just to randomize it a bit. So we don't want this looking the same. And then I'm going to do this one more time. about there and let's get a bit more rotation going on maybe I'll just choose a different direction on that one as well just to mix things up and I think I can probably do this one more time so let's duplicate again and move all of these up like that now of course at the moment that's going to look all kinds of wrong um, yeah, I don't really want to go any higher than that, so what I'm going to do, put this into vertex mode, I'm just going to now change the height of the tree a bit, that should be okay. Okay, so let's put that into object mode, and now 
I want to make this a reference as well for a little while because I don't want to accidentally select this while I'm working on the branches. So, um, what is this? Layers. Uh, create layer from selected. Let's call this trunk or layer underscore trunk. Like that. We'll save that. Let's reference that layer. Right, now, what these branches tend to do is they get a little bit bushier as they go up and then they kind of come back in again as they hit the top. So what I'm going to do to try and emulate that is I'm going to select this many and I'm going to scale them up a touch and then I'm going to select this many and scale them up a touch and this many and scale them up a touch and this many and scale them up a touch. And now, anywhere where I'm not particularly happy, I'm just going to make them a bit bigger. Like that. I think we need a little bit more going on down here. Yep, that's not bad. I'm not happy with the thickness of my trunk, if I'm honest. I think that doesn't look quite thick enough. So, let's just bring that up a bit. That might be a bit too much. Okay, now what I want to do is just put some rotation on some of these. So, I think I'm just going to select some at random and do stuff, oh, not that much do stuff with them. Oh, don't want the trunk. Why is that not reference anymore? Okay, let's get these ones. I'm just really getting random selections of or random-ish and just doing things with them. There we go. Ah, too much. Okay, I'm not too happy with this section here. So I'm going to scale these up a bit. And there we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I think overall, let's just scale them all up. So the last thing we need to do is just select on the trunk, oh, we can't because it's reference, select on the trunk and do mesh display soften edge and that will just soften that up. So now if we were a player at ground level we'd be able to look up at this and we get a nice bushy awesome tree. So this will work in game, it'll be beautiful, it's ready to go. What we're not going to cover in this tutorial though is what you would do with the normal maps, what you would do with the roughness maps, how you would import it into game. If you are interested in that, then if you click on the link on screen, then that will take you to my creating game art tutorial series. This is a series that takes you through the process of creating a game environment using Unreal Engine and Maya. So you'll create all of your assets, you'll create all of the different texture maps, you'll put them into Unreal, You'll create the really sexy materials, you'll place them around, and you'll be able to create uh, something like what you see on screen. Um, if I haven't finished that yet, you'll be taken to a link that you can uh, be notified when it's complete. If it is finished, you'll be taken to the link to get that tutorial. Right. Special thanks to my patrons that helped me get these tutorials made. So... Um, I'm going to pop their names on screen so that they get in all the thanks they deserve. Cheers, guys. Thank you for your support. Um, if you're not a patron, then please consider becoming one. I do put a lot of effort into making these tutorials. I don't know if it came across on this one. It is really late. Maybe I should only do these in data. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, then please hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's what it's there for. Uh, and you'll be able to... Find me other tutorials, I've got a lot more stuff coming up, so make sure that you are subscribed for that. If you've learned a lot about making trees from this tutorial, then hit the like button and leave a comment below as well. 
Uh, if you've made any trees using this method, then send me a link to what you've made. I'm always interested to see what people have made based on uh, my tutorials. And that's it, guys. I hope you like it. Uh, I'll make another one soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.